Hey everyone, this is Angela from State of Puzzling. In this video, I want to share with you how I keep my puzzle pieces sorted. When you first get a puzzle, usually the first step is to start sorting the pieces. I use three different options. Um, so the first one that you see is on the market, it's a plastic sorter. You can also get a cardboard sorter as well. In the plastic sorters, this one, this particular one is from Springbok. Let me open this one up. And you'll have these, you know, usually they come in different colors and they're stackable. You know, really, really nice um, way to sort your puzzles in there. And then for your cardboard pieces, same idea, you have them nested. This one is from White Mountain. Um, the prices on these are very reasonable, about $20. You can get um, various sales on them. Wait, wait for a sale and then you can pick these up. I think these are really nice commercial options for sorting your pieces. Um, I think it also pays to have a few of these around in, in your puzzle studio. I think they do definitely come in handy. One of the things that I don't like about them um, is when you are sorting a puzzle, you basically are tying up that puzzle sorter. So you can no longer use it, right, until you are, until you have completed the puzzle. Um, and so that's kind of a downside. One of the other downsides that I find with any of these um, puzzle sorters is that um, once you have your puzzle pieces in here, when you're actually doing the puzzle, you'd have to store the poster or the puzzle box so that you can actually do the puzzle. So for example, if I have, let's say I have this puzzle here and I have sorted it into my puzzle sorter, I can certainly put the pieces into the puzzle sorter. So let's say I, I have all my pieces in here and then I can pack it up really nicely, which is great. But um, <clears throat> in this, in some of these, like you can't put your post, your poster in. You don't want, want to really fold your poster. So you'd have to keep the puzzle box. So now when I'm doing this puzzle, I have the pieces in the sorter and then I have the box or the poster in the puzzle box. And so this really gives you two boxes now to keep track of. And that's one of the, one of the downsides, I think, to using the puzzle sorters. So now let me talk about some DIY options. The first DIY option that I use is Ziploc bags. I've written a blog post on the website about this and I'll certainly put the link of it um, in the video description. But plain Ziploc bags, um, you can certainly have them, you know, I have some that are zippered, I have some that have the, um, you know, the, the groove enclosure, uh, I use small ones, I use larger ones. These are sandwich size, and then I have um, gallon size. I prefer to use the stretch options, and I really like them to be clear, but if they, if they come colored, that's fine too. But you can see the stretch ones allow you to get more puzzle pieces in them, so I really like the stretch options. And I'll put some links in the video below. But let me show you, if you're using the Ziplocs, let me bring this other puzzle out. And this is a puzzle that I'm currently working on. It's from Anatolian. It's got 500 pieces to it. So when I first got this puzzle, I started to use my Ziploc option. So what I did was, is I just started to sort everything into the Ziplocs. And you can see, I, I can use as many Ziplocs as I need to. I've sorted the end pieces, the color pieces, you know, just depending on what the what the actual puzzle looks like. You can kind of sort your colors, you can sort your patterns, you can certainly get your end pieces. And you can see the Ziploc bags fit very neatly back down into the puzzle box. And then 
that puzzle is now self-contained and whenever you want to do your puzzling, then you'll have the option to do that. Here's another puzzle that I've done that with as well. And again, what I like about the Ziploc bags is that you can use as many of them as you want to, and you can have, you know, this allows you to have as many puzzles going as you want to. I've got about nine puzzles going now, uh, various places around the house. And, um, you know, I usually will just kind of start and I have my Ziploc bag option here. The Ziploc bags, they're, you know, the cost is very minimal. They're easy to get. Um, and again, you can use as many bags as you need to. Now, I have also developed another method that I want to show you as well. And this involves the Ziploc bags, but it utilizes paper plates. And I've, I've seen people doing this on the web, and I want to show you my version of it. So I have, for this particular puzzle, I've started to use some of these paper plates. And, and well, actually these are foam plates, but you can use paper plates as well. And what I've done is to put in a small piece of felt. Um, this is an acrylic felt. You can get them in uh, batches. Uh, sometimes they come in stores like Michael's or Hobby Lobby. They come in squares, 12 by 12 squares, or you can get them by the roll. I actually have a roll of it, and then I cut from that roll. And so what I like to do is I just cut the squares so that it kind of fits into the, the paper plate. And I actually will have this, you know, on my lap, I'm watching TV or whatever, and then I can sort and really kind of work on sections of the puzzle. The felt holds the pieces in place, and then I will stack these plates. And so what you can do is just have your, your pieces on your plates with the felt, you stack them, Put a piece on top and then take your Ziploc bag and use the stretchable one so that you have some space there. And you can just put that right into your Ziploc bag. You don't even have to close it, but it's up to you. And then what I like to do is, and I just started this puzzle, so I'm kind of working on that section, but I would sort out a section and then start to work it onto the plates. And then what I like to do is put the plate back into the puzzle and then I will stack my Ziploc bags on top and then I just put the puzzle, I just close the puzzle top and then I'll just store that puzzle around the house. And so that's a nice um, DIY option that I found. The plates are very economical, they're stackable. And they really do help, I think, with the larger, with the larger puzzles. I've seen people, when they're starting to do a puzzle, they would kind of lay it out all on the table. Well, this puzzle has a thousand pieces. So if I start laying it out on a table, depending on your setup in your home, you may not have that kind of space. Um, and then remember when you're laying it out, it takes up space on the table when you have it all spread out. So this really gives you a very portable way of doing a puzzle. You can still make progress on the puzzle. I've traveled with my puzzles like this um, as well. And so those paper plates, um, that option, sticking it into the Ziploc bag, it really, really works very, very well. So I hope that you find that helpful. And again, many different options, and I just wanted to share three of them with you. So you have the Ziploc bag, the Ziploc bag with the plate. That's, that's that DIY option. And then, of course, the commercial puzzle sorters, which I also really, really enjoy. You have the plastic ones, you have the cardboard ones, but um, I do hope that you found this video helpful. So happy puzzling, folks. This is Angela again from State of Puzzling. Goodbye for now.